Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And before we get to the video, just want to show this ladder. See that point there? That's the maximum uh, allowed in terms of height. Yeah, um, but it's a good ladder for the electricians. Yep, so I hope you guys are doing well. It's been a while. Uh, so let's get into the video. So in today's video, I'm showing you how to install an electric shower. And it's a Triton one, so I'm replacing the existing one, which is faulty. So the screws, the old one, you just take them off. So there should be four screws, two at the top, two at the bottom. And then simply move the cover away. And uh, you have to be careful because you need to make sure you isolate the power before you do this. So on your consumer unit, isolate the circuit for the shower or the pull cord. And there you go. So you got your live and neutral and earth, supplementary boundary, bonding, sorry. And then you got your um, mains cold water coming in into the shower. So I'll simply take the clip off. And then we'll get into the video in terms of uh, the steps. So that's the pot, that's the 15 mil isolation valve. So I'll turn the water off. Then once you've done that, and the two screws. So those two screws will simply take the shower off. And then the live and neutral and earth. And that's the wire itself. And that's the pipe coming into through the wall with the elbow and the, and the isolation valve. So you do that. Uh, horizontal to vertical to switch it off. Okay, make sure the power's off. Okay. As you can see I'm isolating the circuit uh, and check well I've isolated it and checking where the power is definitely dead with the voltage meter. Okay, do all the combinations. So, okay, so I'm happy with that. So Start take and then you close the um, the water off on the isolation valve and take the live neutral and earthwise off. Okay, got my adjustable spanner. So the, on this old shower, the adjustable s uh, nut it has is been used to clamp in the earth wire and the supplement in the bonding. So obviously on the new one, it's probably a, a screw terminal, but on these old ones, it, it was an actual um, a, a nut and a washer. Okay, so you simply move that wire. And then, you know, making sure, like I said earlier, the, make sure the water is turned off from that point there. You can either do it from the mains, you know, at the stopcock, or do it right here, which is exactly. just the isolation valve. So you can turn, turn that with a flat screwdriver. And then, and then open it, and then open the nut with my adjustable spanner. Okay, so the top screw, uh, anti-clockwise, and then take the top one and then the bottom one. And try not to drop it at the same time. There you go, and the second one as well. So depending on which shower you got, so some might have uh, two, some might have three, so it does vary on the type of shower you've got. So I can see there's a little bit of silicone there that's holding it back. So we'll remove that and then we'll take that off as well. Yep. Just pull any excess off. Right, so I'll make it a little bit neater and then I use a standing knife just to scrape it off a little bit as well to make it nice because otherwise the new one it won't sit flush on the tile. Okay, so we're just gonna just put it in place 
uh, fit it into the isolation valve and then you know make it sure it's nice and straight you know what you can use a level but to be honest you want to follow the lines of the tile grout lines or the shower screen you know to make because that way you know the eye would recognize if it's out or not and plus on this in this instance my holes are bang on similar so the triton shower is pretty much similar to the previous one so the holes so they're bang on okay so what i noticed is you know the plugs the raw plugs they were actually sitting on the actual tile you shouldn't you shouldn't sit on the tile you should actually sit on uh, the brick as well so that's not pushing it back because you don't want any strain on your tile you want strain on the actual brickwork because that's going to hold uh, that fixing a lot better because if you tighten it on y your tile there's a chance of it cracking the tile as well there you go so the nut and olive that goes under the plastic shower inlet valve so the nut goes on first and then the olive you can use PTFE tape but to be honest because it's plastic um, it's it's okay I mean I've done this many times and it's never leaked so you, d you don't want to tighten it too much but you know get that that olive correct and, and then I'll put the tighten tighten the nut on which I'll show you here and um, you could be careful not to tighten it too much so hand tight first there you go so just make sure the olive is going down as well in the right place so before putting the screws on I like to put the actual uh, olive uh, tightened properly and then not the reason for that is I don't want to fix the shower and then trying to tighten the nut afterwards and you can break the actual plastic fitting because you want to make sure that's proper straight and level before you do any fixing uh, you know secure the shower so this is the way I prefer it to be honest because it's guaranteed that you know your valve is not going to put too much pressure on that, that inlet valve fitting okay so I'll get your adjustable spanner and then just give it a, a, a couple of turns but you know not don't go crazy with this it's only a, s a small amount of turns so you'll feel it so you know you when you when you do, when you do with your t hand torque settings you'll you'll know exactly when it's done okay so put the screw into the raw plug again don't use any power power tools here just try and do it hand tight because otherwise you, you might there's a chance of you breaking the actual plastic um, uh, fittings you know the, what the actual shower fitting itself so if you do it by hand you'll know if it's correct amount of torque Okay, just check one more time. Okay, the next stage before we put the wires in, the live, neutral and earth, we're going to test the wire, the integrity of the wire itself. So we're going to do some testing here. Do continuity of the CPCs, which is your earth wire, and then check and make sure the insulation, insulation of the wire is uh, up to scratch as well. Okay, so what we're going to use here is a multimeter, so MFT, multifunction tester. So we're just going to check the continuity, and then so first thing I'm going to do is null out my leads. So any resistance that we have on my, my leads itself, I'm going to null them out so we can check the true resistance on the live and earth wire. Okay, so the crocodile clips. So one for the green, uh, which goes into um, Earth terminal, and one live, which is a brown one. Okay, so this is the QTEC KT64, and I'm just going to null out my needs. So press the null button first to reset it, and then it measured the resistance on the leads.
and that's it. And then you take um, the null function, so that means the meter will take out the resistance of the leads now. So now when we measure it, it'll be more accurate. Okay, so get my loop. Uh, Okay, make sure that, you know, before we isolate, we isolate this earlier, so make sure all the power's off before you remove the lid. You can't remove the lid without all the power being turned off. Okay, can you see it? I'm linking with my crocodile clips the live uh, wire to the earthing terminal. So that all the earth wires, so basically I want to check to measure the continuity between the two to make sure there's continuous earth protection to, to that unit itself. Okay, so we're going to check the resistance between the two wires, the line and, and CPC, which is an earth wire, and then that's a live line wire, and it's 0 0.3 ohms. Okay, so we take that off. And now we're doing insulation resistance testing. To, uh, we're going to apply a voltage to the wire to check if the, all the insulation is okay. Okay, so it's clear between line and neutral. And I did line and earth, but because it's got parallel um, path, it's, it's still um, a good number. So that's when it's connected to all the other CPCs. Okay, so earth to neutral is 199 yes the reason why you had that low reading on the other um, CPC side is because it's still connected in the, um, the the bar at the top okay so connect the wires back the line one back which is the live wire and in the circuit and same with the neutral back into the correct side put your lid back on and then connect the terminals up so we know that the wire is okay to use. So that's a neutral. Make sure that you know you got the right correct tightness. Checking the manufacturer's um, screws as well to make sure those are tight. And the same with the live. So I had a little bit of trouble with this um, sleeving, and so what what I decided to do, uh, you'll see shortly, is I, I decided to take a bit of that sleeving off because it was getting in the way of the main clip going into the the shower unit. Okay, so connect both earth wires back to the CPCs. So one's coming from the board, and one is the supplementary bonding for that's connected to the pipe going to the bath. Again, make sure you check your connections. It's very important to have the CPC and there you go. Check it one more time. Because you know each time you move the wire it can get a little bit loose so you gotta make sure that the copper is you know properly connected. Okay, put the water back on and test for any leaks. So the screw needs to be vertical and that will allow the water to come through. And check, yep, it's all nice and dry, perfect.
but you also need to check that when the shower is on as well. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm making a slight adjustment for the bottom side of the clip, the tray, uh, so the tray side of the electric shower. So at the bottom, there's like a little cover. So this bit is used so you can allow the you know the copper pipe coming through from the wall going into the actual electric shower. So you know sometimes it's underneath, sometimes coming from the side. So depending on where your pipe's coming from, you you alter it, alter it accordingly. Okay. So any holes, make sure you seal them up because you don't want any water going behind those tiles and you know going going downstairs because this bathroom's upstairs. Just make sure that you know all the water drips down if there is any leaks on down to the over the, on top of the tile rather than to the back of the tile. Okay, so the bottom cover is to go back on now. So I simply put it into these grooves left and right. And make sure the wire is not in the way. And then you, you grab the two screws and then uh, to fix it back on. So two screws for the actual bottom clip. And then you got your four screws for the main lid. Again, it's very important to use screwdriver hand tight. You don't want to be using power tools. And this is the actual um, outlet pipe that goes to the hose pipe to your shower head. So the reason why I took that off is just easier to maneuver the clip back on. You don't have to remove that. There is a way of doing it, but because my wire was very close to it, I decided to move it and take it off. But it's easy to put it back on. It's just a rubber washer and it clips back in with those two screws. There you go, nice and straight, put the cover back on. Then you've got two screws at the top. And uh, you know, just make sure you push it against the rubber seal. There's a rubber seal on that cover. Make sure the IP rating is top standard. There you go, so get the shower hose. Make sure you put the, the rubber washer in there before you put the actual shower head on it. That comes with the rubber washer, and you just simply screw it on. There you go. Same on this side, clockwise. Make sure the rubber washer is in there before you tighten it. Hand tight, and you, you can use an adjustable spanner on it as well, or pliers, and you know, give it an extra snug fitting. Okay, so I'm going to change the actual holder as well, the shower head holder. And, and luckily I can use the same holes because obviously this is a similar size and you can and then you can adjust the actual um, the tray where you put you know your your shower gel what's up and whatnot and then the actual holder for the the shower head you can just start up and down okay so you've got two screws there and then you've got two caps to cover it and there you go There you go guys, it's all complete. Thanks for watching and I hope it's, you find this video very useful. Don't forget to subscribe and see you on the next one guys. Take care.